are, are supposed to come together as it is given to them from heaven. From heaven. So let me explain to you how I see this practically. If you're single and you come to me and say, Rabbi, is there a man in the congregation that you think I shouldn't marry? Now, I know that puts a pressure on me, but I'm saying unless you have parents who are set apart, that is their responsibility, okay? I'm telling them, I'm telling them a marriage that'll last forever. You with me? Uh, or, say, uh, I, I, th there's this, there's, there's, um, if you're a man, say, there's a woman that I'd like to marry, what do you, do you think you can speak to her and you could do a shidukin? The odds are that if we do a shidukin in the spirit, meaning this single man is full of the Ruach, washing the blood, walking in Torah. This single woman is washing the blood, walking in Torah. Coming to the rabbi, who's the spiritual authority in place of the parents, if the parents are not walking in the Ruach, and say, I'm shy, can you approach him? I'm shy, can you approach her? And see if we can make shidukin. I guarantee you I'll never be divorcing you. I'll guarantee you won't be on TV in, in, in divorce court. <laughs> See, we got, the way we got it set up now is, Pastor, hello, we're getting married. Can you do it? I can pay you 200 <laughs> My goodness, of course we're going to have problems. <laughs> Yahweh didn't date us, and Yahweh didn't court us, did he? He chose us. Are you with me? And so the, the community of faith is set up to prepare the wedding before there is a wedding, before there's an engagement, before, forget dating, courting, schmorting, all the ways of the world fail. I mean, in case you hadn't noticed, the failure rate is acute, man. It's, it's wild, it's out, of, it's out of control. You know why it's out of control? Because you chose your husband. What verse is that in scripture? And you chose your wife, Bubba. And it didn't work out that good. Now, if Yahweh, now sometimes we luck out. We don't believe in luck. We don't believe in luck. But sometimes you luck out. A man and a woman get together, they chose each other, and whew, it worked out. But wouldn't you rather have Yahweh's guarantee beforehand? Yeah. Believe it. Wouldn't you rather have Yahweh's blessing beforehand? Yeah. The bride has made herself ready. The arrangements have been made. Go with me to 2 Corinthians 11, 2. 2 Corinthians, is anyone enjoying? Yeah. So not only is this how you get ready for Yeshua, and let's say I'm single, how does this apply to me? Are you not the bride of Yeshua? Are you, is anyone born again in here? Is anyone in this room born again, born of the Ruach HaKodesh? Well, then you're his bride. How do you get yourself ready? By finding the things he has prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Not the things you choose. I choose to serve him. I choose to go to uh, China. I, cho I choose to go to the Philippines. I choose, I choose. We are, you choose that I have chosen you. You have not chosen me. We are to walk in the things that he has chosen for us. How do I know if this place is right? How do I know if Shabbat is right? How do I know if wearing a head covering is right? How do I know if wearing tzitzit is right? How do I know who's right? You don't. You've got to enter the word of Yahweh to find the things that he tells you he has prepared and arranged before the foundation of the world for his bride. If his bride is supposed to wear a head covering and supposed to stay away from lobster and shellfish, you better walk in those things that are all part of the prearranged wedding. That's how you prepare yourself. You prepare yourself for obedience to the things that are revealed. Stop making excuses. We all have excuses. We all have headaches. We all have foot aches. We all need back work and chiropractic work. Mm -hmm. We all need some kind of future surgery, minor or major. Stop making excuses. The men and women who serve Yahweh get things done, find the things that have been prepared for them for the foundation of the world and walk according to the revelation of the things that they have been prepared and they're preparing themselves for the return of the Messiah. You will not be ready for the return of the Messiah unless you prepare yourself with the things that are already revealed for eternity, chosen beforehand for you before the foundation of the world. Amen. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 11.2. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Second Corinthians 11.2. Rav Shul says, I am jealous for you with a jealousy according to Elohim. For I gave you in marriage... To, uh, huh? Who? What? Oh, whoa. Gave you? 
Rav Shaul gave the Corinthian assembly to one husband to present you to your husband as an innocent virgin maiden to the Mashiach. What? 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 Rav Shaul says, Corinth, Corinthian bride, he says, I gave you, what does it mean to gave? I decided to give you to the Messiah through my preaching, through my work, through my ministry. I decided to give you and present you to the Messiah, and I presented you and gave you as an innocent virgin to Messiah. Notice the reason the Corinthian assembly was... The reason the Corinthian assembly was carnal is because they were starting to choose other brides in their life. They were starting to court and date other brides, other goads, other worldly passions, other worldly desires. We know that the Corinthian assembly was a worldly congregation because they were courting and dating foreign Elohim. They were courting and dating their own ideas. They were courting and dating their own understanding. They were courting and dating, courting and dating, courting and dating. And Rav Shaul says, I didn't call you to court and date the world and Venus and Mercury and Baal and Jupiter and Hercules. He said, I gave you, I presented you to the Moshiach. In other words, he arranged the marriage between the Corinthian assembly and Yeshua. It was a Shedakim. Shedukim. Do you see that? It was arranged. If I'm doing my job, that's what I'm teaching you how to do. That's why I don't let you choose. That's why if I find out you're going to Sunday services, I'll speak to you. You'll be, I, will, I will give you a call. You'll get to know my phone number. See, a lot of Messianic rabbis have that problem. Whoa, Rabbi Moshe, I got problems, I got problems. What, what are the problems? They come on Shabbat, and then they go to church on Sunday. I don't know what to do. How do I get them to stop? I tell you, because you've got to present them to Yahweh. You've got to present them to Yeshua. You've got to tell them all the things that have been arranged for them, and they got no choice. You want to serve Yahweh, love Yahweh, walk in obedience. You have no choice. Your choice is out the window. You gave away all your rights the day you said yes to become his bride. You gave away all your rights. No more excuses. No more public transportation is not working. No more cars not working. No more, I got to stay home for a phone call. Someone's going to call me long distance. There's a lazy man ways of Yahweh. Get angry at me. There are excuses. You've got to enter into the things that Yahweh has prepared for you because it is my job to give you to Yeshua, to espouse you to Yeshua and not to the things you want to date in court. That's why people don't like my teaching. It's too direct. It's too direct. Because I have to espouse you with jealousy. I am jealous that I am giving away, I am giving away the congregation that I have that I started and presenting you to your husband is prearranged. I'm not as long as you are under my care, I'm not gonna let you choose your own husband. If you are Israel, you have to obey the Torah. You have to believe in the blood of Yeshua. You have to be faithful. Doesn't say you have to be healthy to serve Yahweh. Doesn't say you have to have your mind all together to serve Yahweh. Doesn't, mean, doesn't say you have to have a full bank account to serve Yahweh. It doesn't say you have to have health insurance before you can start serving Yahweh. It says you are, are a spouse to Yeshua and you and I need to serve Yeshua and prepare by the, walking in the things that he has prepared for us. Do you understand his love for us? Amen. He chose us and we weren't even born. Aren't you glad he didn't check us out? Because if he had, he might have smelled something. He could have gotten in that front row of that seat and go, oh, each star, there's an each star smell in here. <laughs> you have any rotten eggs under the seat? <laughs> You say, hey, 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 uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, Eldridge, uh, uh, how come, uh, how come, how come there's something rattling in the trunk? What's that rattling in the trunk? Oh, oh, don't worry, Jesus, it's just a tree. A tree? <laughs> you, you better be happy Yeshua didn't court through his bride and didn't date his bride. 
This has all been arranged by the Heavenly Father and we've been presented to Yeshua. Because Father knows best. If your father and mother are not walking in the spirit and not walking in the ways of Torah and the blood of Yeshua, I'll be your father. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Call no man father. I'll be your father. Or Abraham will be your father. <laughs> I would rather have any believer arrange my marriage and to court and date my flesh because my flesh is courting someone else's flesh and sometimes the court don't make the full court and they don't make the full court, they wind up in divorce court. That's right. That's right. So, so if, I, if, if I, I'd rather go to someone who's spirit-filled, someone who's walking in the Ruach, someone that I can trust and say, can you look for a husband for me? Because I can't choose. I know that if I choose a husband and it's not in the spirit, so you're not going to be led by your flesh. You're going to be led by the ruach and my best interest. You see? So the Father, the Father presented us to Yeshua. My, my, my. So how do we prepare ourselves? Huh? How do we prepare ourselves? Through the things that Yahweh has prepared for us. The arrangements have been made, have been made, brothers and sisters. Question is, are we going to be faithful? Shadukim, the arrangements to be Yeshua's bride. See, that's a lie from the from the Sunday system. We're not the bride of Yeshua. Not yet, we're not. We've just the arrangements have been made, but we've got to enter into the marriage chamber. So we're not the marriage hasn't been consummated. Step two, but Hashem Yahweh. Step two is the Erusim. Erusin. Step one is what? Shedukin, Shetach. And seriously, that's a, especially in, in, in Europe and in ancient Jewish culture, it was unthinkable for, a, for a, a child to choose their spouse. Okay? So the Shetach was done by the parents. And didn't the father choose you to be his son's bride, didn't he? What a choice. We got the right one, we got the only true husband. And, he, and even though we were filthy and we were, and we were degraded in our sins, he cleansed us and washed us by the washing of water of the word. And now we are as a chaste bride before Yeshua. He, he has given us Yeshua and he's given Yeshua us. The heavenly father has made Shedu king. Amen. 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 But now we go to Erusin. The next stage is Erusin, which is betrothal. Betrothal, E-R-U-S-I-N, -E Erusin. Once the couple became Erusin, or betrothed, the contract, or the ketuvah, was legally binding. Hello? They were legally a couple. Legal. When did they meet each other? When did the man and the woman get to meet each other? When they got married. Never. When they entered under the chuppah and entered into the betrothal, they finally got to meet each other. And what's Yeshua telling us? You don't go by looks. You don't go by the outward. You don't go by the flesh. Are you with me? You go by the hidden man of the heart and let a spiritual person Look for a look for a bride or a, or a husband for you. Let a spirit-filled person look and, and arrange the thing. Take a chance. Take a chance that Yahweh's right. Some of you single folks, take a chance that Yahweh's right. Let a spirit-filled person, a rabbi, an elder, someone you respect in the congregation, or preferably your parents, but your parents may not be walking in the truth. Let them choose, and I'll guarantee you, you'll have a life of bliss and harmony because you're walking in Yahweh's ways. You'll be choosing your spouse the way he chose us. Radical, but it's but it's everlasting. Hello? And some of you moms that have daughters that have been divorced five times, you know I'm telling you the truth. You know I'm telling you the truth. If they, if, if they had let you choose their husband, they wouldn't be in this mess that they're in today. 
because you have more wisdom, you have more experience, you have more understanding, you've been around the block a few more times, and, a, and someone who has the wisdom of a parent who's filled with the Ruach, washing the blood, walking in Torah, can make a better choice than their daughter who's just, who may be just chasing a tail or a bank account. Don't use your imagination, please. So, I mean, they're full of wisdom, they're full of understanding, they're full of experience, and the missing ingredient is, are they born again and walking in the Torah? If they are, what? The pressure is off of you, dating, courting, not to mention you'll be saving a ton of money. If you let your mom and dad choose your husband, or let your mom and dad or the rabbi or someone you know is going to make a right choice for you, and that your flesh won't get in the way, it's going to save you a ton of money. How much you, just going to a Broadway show and dinner is a hundred bucks. And let's assume you've got a date for three years before you decide to do the undo and do what you can't do because you shouldn't be doing it anyway. That's about ten grand you could save. And no games. Can I come in? Can I come in? What are you going to come in for? Oh, just some music. Music. Music? How come the bed is all made out in fine linen? And then next time, oh, I couldn't get in this week. Then next week, maybe this is the week I'll be able to come in. No, not this week. The third week, can I come in? Oh, yeah, sure. We'll just get some Chinese food and watch TV. Yeah. See, now, so instead of playing games with Yahweh, feeling guilty, feeling bad, feeling dirty, come on. I mean, Yahweh knows what he's doing. No shouting today. We <laughs> got some serious contemplation going on. Yeah. All right. Betrothal, betrothal was legally binding. Erusin. The only thing that had not happened is physical consummation. Now, we see this in the story of Miriam and Yosef. The word here is betrothed, legally married in the eyes of the community, but the bride was still a virgin. Yeshua and his bride Israel. The betrothal, listen, happened at Mount... Were Miriam and Yosef betrothed? Yes. Yeah. Were Miriam... Was Miriam a, uh, an Alma? A Betula? Yes, she was. Mm -hmm. Miriam, the mother of Yeshua, was an Alma, betrothed to Yosef, found to be with child, like, holy cow, how did that happen? And so Yosef, being a just man, meaning, what is it, just? The church says, she was just. But Hebraically, he was Torah keeping. He was honoring Torah. He was just, wanted to put it away privately, not to make a public disgrace and open shame of his legal wife. Now, they had not consummated, they had not, they met the first time under the canopy or the talit with the four poles, symbolic of the Shekhinah, or the glory covering of Yahweh, when a marriage couple goes under the talit, it means they're going under his glory, going under his Shekhinah, blowing up, going under his covering. And so when they went under the chuppah, they went, oh. And they first, and they got to meet the person that they were going to spend the rest of their life with. That definitely takes the flesh out of the picture, don't you think? Yeah. And so that's what happened with Miriam and Yosef. And that's what happened with Yahweh and Israel. He married Israel on Mount Sinai. Now go to Hoshea. Is anyone enjoying? Yeah. Tov, tov, tov. Hoshea, Hoshea. Go to Hoshea. Not Jose, Hoshea. Go to, give me a page. Thank you. Page 600. Now check this out. Check this out, man. Notice. Noticias. 23. <laughs> Check this out, man. Jose, Hoshea, chapter 2. Therefore, see, I am alluring her, and I will lead her into the wilderness. Yahweh yeah, talking about his bride, Israel. And will speak to her heart. See, when you don't court and date, and when you, and you, are, you are married, and you're an Israelite, and you realize you're Israel, you want to prepare for Yeshua's second coming, You've got to go to the wilderness. How am I going to prepare for Mashiach's coming? I'm not married. I don't want to get married. I'm an altacaca. I'm an altacaca. I don't want to get married. What are you talking to me about marriage, Rabbi? I don't want to get married. I'm already married. And if I did, I want to get married. I want to prepare for Mashiach's coming. How? How? Here it is, honey. Get ready to take a trip into the wilderness. 
Hosea 2.14, because Yahweh married Israel at Sinai, right, wrong. He betrothed her. He prepared her through Sedukin. He married her. He betrothed her through Eru Sin. Where? On Sinai. He was legally married to Israel through the giving of the Torah, the marriage ketubah, the marriage covenant, the legally binding contract between Yahweh and Israel was given and entered into by both parties where? At Sinai. Did Yahweh see Israel before Sinai? No, they were a band of slaves. Did the band of slaves meet the bridegroom before Sinai? No, they were a band of slaves who couldn't see Yeshua, and Yeshua had to bring them up on the mountain to meet him. Amen, somebody? And so... They met each other in the betrothal, and from Sinai forward, they were legally married. Turn to your neighbor and say, from Sinai forward. Let's try that again, from Sinai forward. From Har Sinai forward, they were legally married, but look what happened to the bride. The bride needed to be spoken to again, and the way to prepare the bride for the bridegroom was to bring her and speak to her heart in the wilderness. If your life's been a wilderness, things aren't going right, no one's talking to you, no one cares about you, you're going from one thing to another. You can't shake the cold, can't shake the bill collector, can't shake your problems. Can't your, Yahweh said, he's luring you to allure you back to him. Instead of fighting him and bitching and complaining, pardon my Latin, you should be know and thankful that you're being allured into the wilderness where he's going to speak to your heart. He's going to show you your double-mindedness. He's going to show you your shortcomings. He's going to show you the areas that you let yourself down, let alone him down. He's going to lure you back into the wilderness of circumstance of life and speak gently to your heart in the wilderness. Verse 15. And Yahweh will give her vineyards. Talking about his bride Israel. He married her on Sinai. She was unfaithful. She did not keep the covenant. She did not keep the covenant. And notice, he will give her vineyards from there. Where? In the wilderness. And the valley of Achor, meaning the valley of tribulation, as a door of expectation. Jacob's trouble is called what? Is called the valley of Achor. The valley of Achor is a euphemism for the time of Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation. What the world, what the church says is the end. Oh my goodness, the great tribulation, it's over. Yahweh says, I will take the great tribulation and turn it into a door of hope for Israel to come back to me. Amen. So it's a time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 37, Yermiah 37, but he'll be saved in it and out of it. And he'll be saved into the wilderness, and there I will allure her and speak gently to her and remind her that she broke her betrothal vows, her wedding vows, and broke the covenant. But I will turn the time of Yaakov's trouble into an amazing door of opportunity and hope for her to return to me. The purpose of the great tribulation or the, the time of Yaakov's trouble is to take the valley of tribulation and turn it into the door of hope. Are you with me? In, in the tribulation, the exiles of Israel will be regathered, reawakened, and restored. It is the regathering and the restoration of Israel. And Yahweh will use the great tribulation to bring Israel back as a willing bride, ready to consummate the marriage. How do we prepare for the return of Yeshua? Revelation 19.7, we opened up with the scripture. How do we prepare? By preparing for the great tribulation. For the great tribulation will be a time where a door of hope is opened to all Israel, when they're going to come out of the churches and they're not going to see the great tribulation as a time to bake beans and hide in cellars, but as a time of hope that the end of Israel's exile is at hand. Now notice, and there she shall respond as in the days of her youth, when she was on Har Sinai, when she made every scene with Yahweh, betrothal, legally binding marriage.